Imagine that you just witnessed a guy flipping a coin ten times, and each time it came up heads. That's ten heads in a row. Next, he asks you to bet what the next flip will bring, heads or tails. What would you do? Is there such a thing as a best betting strategy? Allow me to explain. Buzz, 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 buzz. The gambler's fallacy is a cognitive bias that helps gambling establishments make boatloads of cash, assuming you're gambling on a cruise ship. Otherwise, the metaphor kind of breaks down. Why are we doing this again? Specifically for the following pun. To the riverbank! Oh, you're right, that was worth it. At its heart, the gambler's fallacy is a mistaken notion that the frequency of a random event changes depending on what has occurred recently. The most common form of this is the idea that a game of chance is due to pay off, or that some particular outcome must occur because it's been a while since it last occurred, or it's come close to happening so many times. And the Oscar goes to... Leonardo DiCaprio! Just kidding! This can be seen commonly at a slot machine, where the patron is convinced that after just one more pull of the lever, they are sure to hit the jackpot. But they are being deceived. A slot machine is specifically programmed to give results that are independent from one another. The odds of hitting the jackpot when pulling the lever are the same each time, regardless of how long it's been since the machine last paid off. And that feeling of being so close to winning is what convinces people to keep feeding money into the machine. One of the most famous examples of the gambler's fallacy occurred at a roulette table at the Monte Carlo Casino in the tiny country of Monaco in the year 1913. Monaco, with its royal family the Grimaldis, is the second smallest country in the world, after Vatican City, and its economy relies heavily upon tourism, gambling, and other things that rich people like. Like not paying income tax. Seriously, Monaco doesn't have an income tax, I'm not being cute. Wait a minute. Casinos? Tax haven? Royal family? Diamond coat of arms? Monaco, are you sure this shouldn't be your flag? Think about it. Call me. Any dang way, patrons at the casino noticed that the color black was coming up repeatedly on the roulette wheel. In European roulette, there are 37 spaces, 18 black, 18 red, and 1 green. The odds of hitting the black space are slightly less than 50%. After about 15 black results, people began swarming the table to bet larger and larger sums of money on red. After all, they reasoned, if 15 black in a row is so rare, then 16 black in a row must be even spectacularly rarer. But black kept showing up again and again, and people lost more and more money. All told, black came up 26 times in a row that day, and the casino made off with millions of francs. This famous event is why the gambler's fallacy is sometimes referred to as the Monte Carlo fallacy. But even though a run of 26 blacks is rare and exciting, with all of the roulette spins in history, it makes sense that something like that would happen eventually. Using something called Bayesian inference, we can actually predict the longest expected run on a roulette table that we should have seen historically. Mathematician Mark Schilling did the math, as his profession suggests, and predicted that the longest run of red or black in human history so far should probably be somewhere between 26 and 32. And that's exactly what happened back in 1943. An American casino had 32 reds in a row. The odds on that? More than 24 billion to 1. And yet, after that 32nd red, what were the odds of getting another red on the next spin? The odds weren't billions to one, they were the same as always, about 50-50. The odds of a gambling game don't change based on recent events, because the wheel or the dice don't have a memory. Imagine if a guy walked into the casino right at the moment when the 30-second spin was happening, and saw everybody a hooting and a hollering as the ball landed on red. He'd have no idea what was going on. He'd think to himself, what's the big deal? It's just a red. Much like that guy, the roulette wheel doesn't know and doesn't care what occurred before the current spin. And the odds of any other combination of 32 red or black are just the same as the odds of 32 red in a row. The odds of getting red black, 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 red black in a row are still 24 billion to one, but it's not as interesting, so nobody remembers it. Now, how often does behavior in line with this fallacy actually show up in casinos? A study involving a research assistant watching 18 hours of security footage from a casino and painstakingly recording every patron at bet found that after a streak of six or more on a roulette table, 85% of betting behavior fell in line with the gambler's fallacy. It seems to be quite common. 
But even if you don't fall into the gambler's fallacy, betting on roulette is still a bad idea income-wise. Casinos are designed to make money. This is why their games come with a house edge, or the mathematical advantage that the casino has over you, which can be used to calculate how much money you can expect to lose when playing one of their games. The more games you play at a casino, the less likely you are to walk away with as much or more money than you started with, simply due to math. I wrote a computer program to calculate the expected odds of return when playing multiple games of roulette where you bet on either black or red each time. As you play more games, your odds of walking away with more money than you started with, or at least breaking even, diminish. Imagine someone who has played thousands of games of roulette over the course of their life. So you might think that you have a chance of making money while gambling, but statistics say you're really just paying money to spin wheels or roll cubes. Aww. So, how should you bet on that coin flip? Bet either way, because the result is still random. Or, don't bet at all. Gambling systems don't work. But, if you're looking to have some fun and can afford to lose some money, it's no worse a form of entertainment than paying $7 for a small popcorn at the movie theater, right? Speaking of entertainment, hit the like and subscribe buttons before you head off to help me keep making more videos. No gambling involved. See you next time.